Good morning, church. How are we doing? Look at all these smiling faces. If I didn't know any better, I'd think you'd be happy to be in church. Yeah, look at those smiling faces. All right, let's all stand together. <laughs> Come on, put your hands together. We don't got a drummer, so you're going to be our beat today. We see prison cells, we see graveyards, we see broken lives and hopeless hearts, but faith sees a miracle looking for a home. We see armies rise, we face lions' dens, we hear giants roar, you will never win. But faith sees a miracle looking for a home. I believe in miracles. And I believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. I can see a miracle. I can see a miracle. Faith sees, faith sees a miracle. Smell the rain, hear the thunder, glory's on the way. Faith sees a miracle, looking for a home.
Let's bless his name today. We bless you, Lord, with all that is within us. We bless your holy name. Hallelujah. To you, my love, my joy, my song, I lift my voice, my heart and soul.
Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We bless you. You are a great, great, great God. How do we describe you? You are indescribable, Lord. Indescribable. And we're just so thankful that you call us children, daughters, and sons of the Most High. You've made us joint heirs with Jesus. Hallelujah. From the highest of heights to the depths of the sea. Creations revealing your majesty. From the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring. Every creature unique in the song. I'm a big fan of astronomy, and I know there are trillions and trillions and trillions of stars, 
and he's got everyone named. The Bible says so. That's just tremendously amazing. And not only that, I'm sure he's been amazing in your life, what he's done for you to bring you to this point. You know, sometimes I look back at my past and I say, I, I wish that hadn't have happened, but I wouldn't be the person today that I am if it hadn't happened. So some things, you know, he's just strengthening us. He's forming us into the people that we are. And I'm just thankful for everything that's happened because it's made me who I am. So praise God. He's a good God, is he not? Can we welcome back Pat Doms to the stage? Who you are. 
for your love, Lord. Your great, great, great love. Yeah. I searched the world. offering for a great God we have. Woo! Amen. Thank you. 
You may be seated. Good morning. There's nothing that's better than him. Amen. <laughs> that's your message for this morning. You can go home. <laughs> We're glad you're with us. Welcome to our online family. Good to see you. Just kidding. No, we're glad you're all with us this morning. We especially just want to encourage you to join us again this Saturday morning. Well, afternoon from 1 to 3 o'clock is our Lift Jesus Higher celebration. We're very excited. And yes, we see the weather forecast and because the Lord has given us this big, beautiful facility, we are going to be bringing the event inside. It'll be dry, it'll be warm, it'll be fun. We hope you'll get your ticket today. They are $1. It'll get you a hot dog, some snacks, a great, great fall dessert, popcorn, beverages, games, prizes, treat bags for a dollar. Come on, that's not inflation. <laughs> okay, so we just encourage you to come out any age. It is certainly designed for the children, but if you're in need of fellowship and just want to have some fun, come on out. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all the treats and snacks you've brought in for us to fill those treat bags. And a great big appreciation to all of you who signed up to serve. We're ready to go. So if you would purchase your ticket for one dollar in the lobby this morning, you do need a ticket to get into the event, okay? And then, you know, we have a need in the house, and uh, that's on our sound team. And so we're just making an appeal. If you are available, interested, you know, pastor has been encouraging us to stir up our gifts. And so as you would let the Holy Spirit lead, you, if you're experienced in sound, great. If you're not, that's fine too. If you're willing to learn, we'd love to have you. All you need to do is sign up uh, on the uh, paper in the main lobby on the main desk, and you'll be contacted and trained, and you can become a part of the team, okay? And then we wanted to mention to you to please join us after service today in the cafeteria for fellowship and refreshments as we celebrate Pastor Appreciation Day today. Yes. Amen. Amen. And you know, that scripture, and I believe it's Jeremiah 3 that says, I have given you shepherds after my own heart. And that's exactly what we're celebrating today. The under shepherds that God has given this house after his own heart. So we wanted to pause a moment. Will you join me as I call our under shepherds up to the platform this morning? Okay, let's start, of course, with Pastor Gary. Amen. <laughs> Pastor Gerard. <laughs> Dean Andy. Pastor Bill. We have Pastor Tim. Pastor Charlene. Hello. I know. And Pastor Danny. <laughs> Woo -hoo! It's okay. And I'm going to turn the microphone and the celebration over to Reverend Ron Bonomo. Well, good morning, everyone. So glad to be here with you to honor these pastors. Amen. Such a spirit of excellence, Reverend Renee, that is in every 40 years of ministry, that is in every aspect. And Susan and I returned from the military in about 2001. Oh, please have your seat. Susan and I returned in the military about 2001. And since that time, we have been involved in, I think, almost every ministry, Pastor, that's up here. Christian and Nathan went to the Greater Works Christian School. 
Uh, Joshua is in the children's ministry. Caleb and Nathan are in the youth ministry. Susan, Christian, and I are down in the Bible school. Every Sunday, every Tuesday, we're here to be fed the Word of God. And Joshua, at his age of seven, knows more than me because he'll be coming here to honor God next week when I used to have to walk Penn Hills because I was a kid and I wanted some candy and I thought that's what you had to do. <laughs> but no one taught me what the roots of that holiday were. No one taught me that. And so, Pastor, uh, we are taught the Word of God here in all of these ministries. And what a difference. I, I have learned here about tithing, bringing the full tithe into the storehouse according to Malachi. I've been taught here how God honors our offerings above and beyond the tithe. I've been taught here how God has a concern for widows, for orphans, and the poor, according to Proverbs. And Susan and I have taken that teaching and put it into our faith, into practice. And we have watched God do Luke 6.38, give back to us good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. So, Pastor, we thank you for all of that. And this side of heaven, as I conclude with this, this side of heaven, we will never fully know the extent of 40 years of ministry to this point in time. But I can give you a little bit of a glimpse from what I know. Susan's mom is in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Every Sunday and every Tuesday, she's watching Pastor Gary because that's her service. And our son Nathan is going to graduate from a Christian school down across uh, the Halton Bridge. And the pastors that now run that organization are graduates of the Greater Works Christian School here. And the woman that I met the other day, yeah, amen to that. The woman I met the other day in Best Buy when I was buying a speaker for the Bible school, she, I guess it was God, she just gravitated towards me and asked me all these questions like I was an expert on the speakers. I told her what I knew. But she said, why are you buying this? And I said, it's for the Bible school. She took a step back, big smile on her face, and said, would it be Greater Works Bible School? I said, yes. I am a proud 1991 graduate from that Bible school. <laughs> Amen. So those are, just, those are just three examples from our household of how we know this ministry is producing 30, 60, 100-fold return blessings in people's lives. Amen? And so with that, would you join me in prayer? Father God, to you belong all honor, all glory, all praise forever and ever. When this building was being built around 1966 or so, you knew that it was predestined to become Greater Works Outreach, the Christian School, and the Bible School, Father. You placed that inside Pastor Gary, and it was birthed. And Father, you have brought shepherds, pastors to come alongside him and run with the vision. And we as a congregation, we honor them, we thank them, we appreciate them, and we love them for what they do. And Lord, we only see them here we don't know all the planning that went into each event, all the contingency plans when plans had to change, and all of the time and sacrifice that they put into their ministry here so that we can be blessed. So, Father, we honor them, and we give you all the praise, honor, and glory for what you've done these past 40 years, what you're doing today, and we give you thanks in advance for the new year and all that you want to accomplish in this wonderful, wonderful ministry. And all, all praise, honor, and glory belong to you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Let's stay here for just a second. Okay. So what I did was I asked everybody for a picture of ourselves. So we're going to put them up on the screen. And what I want you to do, I want you to try to guess, okay, <laughs> Which picture belongs to one of us, all right? So can we put the first picture up? Okay, who is that? Okay, that's, that's little Timmy. All right, next picture.
That's Danny, Pastor Danny. Okay, next. Who is it? Is that you, Pastor Bill? It's me. That's him. <laughs> you haven't changed at all. Now that's easy. <laughs> Pastor Shore? Okay. That's me. Okay. Now, you got to understand something. The reason it's not a baby picture is Pastor Gerard was born before Kodak invented the camera. Okay. Cowboy Dean Andy. Yeah. <laughs> Linda, you done with announcements? We got it. Did you invite everybody to the cafeteria after? Okay, so after service, we do have some refreshments. No, we have a great team there in the kitchen and cafe with <laughs> Jeff and Olympia and his whole team there. They do a wonderful, wonderful job, and we sure do keep them all busy. Thank you so much. So we'll see you right next door if you're able to stay. Let's stand together so we can declare Psalm 91. Are you ready? He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, you are my refuge and my fortress. My God, in you I will trust. Surely you shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. You shall cover me with your feathers and under your wings. I will take refuge. Your truth shall be my shield and buckler. I shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall on my side, 10,000 at my right hand, but it will not come near me. Only with my eyes shall I look and see the reward of the wicked. Because I have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high my dwelling place, no evil shall befall me, nor shall any plague come near my dwelling. For you shall give your angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. Into your hands they shall bear me up, lest I dash my foot against a stone." I shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent I shall trample underfoot. Because I've set my love upon you, therefore you will deliver me. You will set me on high because I've known your name. I shall call upon you. You will answer me. You will be with me in trouble. You will deliver me and honor me with long life. You will satisfy me and show me your salvation. Amen. And Lord, we curse this coronavirus and this Delta variant. We command it to dry up and die. You will not linger. You will not live. You will not spread. There will not be a resurge. We apply the blood of Jesus over the doorposts of our homes, our families, 
our children, our grandchildren, our schools, our places of work, and even over this house. Satan, when you see the blood, you cannot visit, you cannot penetrate, you cannot infiltrate, you must pass over us. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Hallelujah. All right. You may be seated, everyone. Thank you, thank you, everyone. Well, we're going to receive our morning tithes and our offerings. Come on, put your hands together. God loves a cheerful giver. It's almost, well, getting close to this last week of October, and we're just uh, believing. I want you to join with us. Believe that the budget for this month of October is not just going to be met, but exceeded. He is our gyra. He's more than enough. Somebody shout, he's more than enough. More than Amen. Enough. He's more than enough for you. He's more than enough. And we claim as we bless the poor, as, past, as, as uh, Pastor Ron said, and we minister to our, our family in Haiti, God said there will be no lack in our life. We claim no lack in this house, and we claim no lack in your house. So, Father, bless the tithes, the offerings, as we put them into the good ground, the fertile soil of the gospel. Meet every need of this place. Meet every need in our personal lives. You know what we're believing for. You know what we're trusting you for. You said when we honor you, you will honor us. So thank you for just blessing your people and this offering now in the mighty name of Jesus, the Christ of Nazareth. And everybody said, amen. amen. All right, the ushers will serve us. If you are writing out a check, make it payable to Greater Works. If you need a missions envelope or any other help, make sure you get it from them. If those of you that prefer or like to do your giving by credit or debit card, the resource center in the corner of the lobby will be open after the service today. You can stop in there and they will take care of you. We thank you for those of you watching us online on the lower third of your screen. There's a number of ways for you to give. We thank you for being faithful and generous. The Lord bless you abundantly. Wandering into the night Wanting a place to hide This weary soul This bag of bones I try with all my I just can't win the fight I'm slowly drifting A vagabond And just when I Once again, if you have a loose bill, a single, a five, a 10, 20, somebody put in the loose bill offering last Sunday, a $50 bill. Never had that happen before. And last week, we had $650 in our loose bill offering. So could we do that one more time so that we're going to take all the loose bills, we're going to give it to Pastor Shar to buy all the prizes, all the gifts for the children. We want to bless them 
on Leaf Jesus Hour. We would we want them to rather come to church than go out trick or treating and celebrate Halloween in the world. How many believe church ought to be more fun than the world? Amen. So would you just dig something out if you have it, please? And the Lord will bless you for it. Let's all stand together. The ushers are going to come and just receive the tithes and the offerings this morning. Let's continue to celebrate, Danny. Hell lost another one. I am free. I am free. I am free. Hell lost another one. I am free. I am free. I am free. Hell lost another one. I am free. I am free. I am free. Hell lost another one. I am free. I am free. I am free. I said, Hell lost another one. I am free. I am free. I am free. Hell lost another one. for our lives. He's a good, good father. Hallelujah. Remain standing with us for our corporate prayer time. Remember at the conclusion of the message, if anybody needs personal prayer, there will be uh, prayer partners down here in the front willing to pray with you, anoint you with oil if you need healing. How many believe there's a healer in the house today? Come on, somebody. I believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. I love that song we sang today. Miracle has found a place, a home in me. Amen. He could come right here. And uh, if you need a prayer of agreement, someone will pray with you. Just wait for an empty chair, and someone will call you down and minister to you. Uh, we want to keep Sue Alt in our prayers. We want to just believe for total, complete healing for Sue. Hazel. Corollis, Olympia's mom, she had a fall. We want to pray for a speedy supernatural healing for Hazel. Chaz's mom is in the hospital. She had a stroke. And we want to send the word to Chaz's mom up at UPMC that she's going to be totally restored. I believe in miracles. We're still standing with Alana DeShong, her husband Dan, for Katie and Chad Chandler Redenbaugh. They all need healing. Stacy Longo's sister, Elaine, and another friend, Randy, they need healing. Uh, let's see, Barb Cecil, she needs a healing touch from the Lord. We send the word to Barb. Teresa, uh, we're sending the word, Margie, to Teresa today. She's going to be having a surgery. David Byers is in ICU. And uh, Lori Rennick's mom, Mary Lou, she needs a healing touch in her body. So lots of needs, lots of things, people we could pray for. We've all got someone something on our hearts. We've been praying for a young man named Nick who had, has brain uh, bleed and brain clots, and we're just praying for a miracle of life for him. Mr. Bondi, who's a, a, 
a, a husband of one of our teachers here. He needs a miracle healing as well. But so many people, but we serve a great and mighty God. And Father, we call upon the name that is above every name. The name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for everybody here in the house and those that are watching us. There's no distance in the Holy Spirit. Lord Jehovah Rapha, arise. Arise, arise with healing in your wings today. Satan, you are bound over our lives and our families, over our health and our finances. We shatter every stronghold today in the mighty name of Jesus. And we pray, Lord, that you would dispatch angels with answers on our behalf. Fight our battles. Run interference for us, Lord, we pray. Lord, it's not by might, and it's not by power, but it is by the Holy Spirit of God, we pray. Father, we pray for that person beside us and around us right now. You know what they need, and you know what they're believing for. Touch them. Encourage them. Be the glory and the lifter of their heads today. And we give you thanks and praise for hearing and answering our prayers in the strong, the mighty, the matchless name of Jesus, the Christ of Nazareth. And everybody said, Amen. come on, give the Lord thanks with me. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated, everyone. Thank you so much. So great to see all of you today. It really is. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 46 says, However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural, and afterward the spiritual. So there's a principle in the word of God that says, as it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. And I want to tell you something, in the natural, it's harvest time. Somebody shout, it's harvest time. It's harvest time. And we're calling in the harvest. We're calling in the harvest. It's harvest time in the natural. They're harvesting the pumpkins. They're harvesting the crops. They're harvesting the vegetables and the fruits. And I'm believing it's harvest time in the spirit. So in Luke chapter 10, verses 1 and 2, Luke 10 says, After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also, and he sent them out two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. And then he said to them, listen to this, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest. One of God's names is, he is the Lord of the harvest. Say with me, he's the Lord of the harvest. That he would send out. That word send out literally means to thrust out into the harvest field. Laborers. So my first point is that he is the Lord of the harvest. And we need to pray to him and call in our harvest. In the Old Testament, it says, call in your harvest from the north, from the south, from the east, and from the west. If you have unsaved loved ones, if you have people in a backslidden position, if you have family members that are away from God, I'm here to tell you it's harvest time. We need to call them in. 
We need to pray to the Lord of the harvest that he would put people into their lives that would witness to them, that would be salt and light to them. Most of our family, they will be saved by your prayers, but by somebody else's testimony. A lot of times they don't want to hear it from us. That's all right. But I pray to the Lord of the harvest. God's going to put somebody into their lives. And I'm here to tell you the prodigal is coming home. Come on, somebody. In Colossians 4 and verse 5, it says, Walk in wisdom toward those who are on the outside, redeeming the time. One translation says, walk circumspectly. In other words, the word circumspectly means look around. Look around. Because you know why? We all have a sphere of influence. You're going to see people that I might never see. People are going to cross your path that never may cross my path. But if you and I, if we have our eyes on ourself, if we have our eyes on our circumstances, if we are caught up in the big corporation, me, myself, and I, we're never going to recognize the people that God is putting in our path that we can bring to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Walk circumspectly toward those that are on the outside, those that are not yet saved, those that are not yet born again, those that are away from God, those that have backslidden and fallen away. And what's it say? Redeem the time. The word redeem means buy it back. Buy it back. And that's what you and I need to do. We need to go into the highways and byways because the harvest is truly ripe, but the laborers are few. Sad to say, but most people when they become born again, they're on fire for God. They're excited about witnessing they're excited about sharing their faith, excited about sharing the gospel. But usually after four or five years of being born again, we kind of become, oh, some people say they're mature. I like to say we're manure. <laughs> because we just kind of become introverted and to ourselves, and we come to church faithfully, but why don't we invite somebody to come with us? I'm going to say that one more time. I said, instead of just coming to church, why don't you invite somebody to come with you? Oh, I better preach to these folks back here for a moment. <laughs> instead of just coming to church, why don't you invite somebody to come with you? Hallelujah. You know, one out of every four people you invite to church will come with you. I invited somebody to church this morning. I don't know if they're here yet because I can't see everybody. All I see is big bright lights up there. But I'm going to find out. I'm going to find out. But I'm here to tell you, there are people that are hurting. There are people that are looking for answers. The world is filled with people that are living in fear. People that are battling depression. People that are battling addictions. Suicide is on the rise. Hopelessness is just abounding everywhere. And we have the answer. His name is J-E-S-U-S. -S. How do you spell relief? J-E-S-U-S. -S. Come on. Let's go to Colossians chapter 1 and verse 27. Colossians 1.27 says, To them God will 
bold to make known what are the riches of the glory of the mystery among the Gentiles. What is that mystery? It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So my second point is this. We need a harvest of hope. We need to present hope to a hopeless world. I just preached, darkness is covering the earth and gross darkness the people. But the word to the church is what? Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. You and I have the answer. You, but, but I'm going to pray that God is going to put somebody in your path and my path this week. This week that you are going to be able to minister to and offer hope and offer Christ and offer salvation. A harvest of hope. We call it in. In Jesus' name. In Psalm 62, verse 5, I'm reading out of the NIV, the New International Version. Psalm 62, 5 says, My soul, wait silently for God alone, for my hope is from Him. There's a lot of people looking for love and hope in all the wrong places. But thank God we have the answer. We just need to go out as, as Holy Ghost combines and harvest, bring in the harvest, bringing in the sheaves. In Hosea 2 and verse 14, Hosea 2, 14 says, Therefore, behold, I will allure her will bring her into the wilderness and speak comfort to her. I will give her her vineyard from there and the valley of Achor as a door of hope. The valley of Achor means weeping. In other words, there are people that are weeping, that are hurting, that are fearful, that are alone. I'm praying right now that God's bringing somebody to your memory and thoughts right now that's in a valley of Achor. And you know what you and I can be to them? A door of hope. We can go to them and say, you know what? Jesus is not a way. Come on, somebody. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Anyone who comes to him. Anyone who comes, he's going to accept them and love on them and heal them and fill them and deliver them from that hopelessness. The valley of Achor, the valley of weeping will become as a door of hope. She shall sing there as in the days of her youth, as in the day when she came up from the land of Egypt. So Achor is trouble. Achor is weeping. We all know somebody that's in trouble. We all know somebody that's just feeling hopeless and hurting. We all know somebody that's depressed and oppressed. And we can open for them a door of hope as we witness to them as we invite them to church, as we are salt and light in this dark world where gross darkness is covering so many people. I think many in the church have lost our evangelistic edge. I do. I think we've become too comfortable just being saved by ourselves, 
Can I tell you the next best thing to go into heaven is taking somebody with you. Come on, somebody. God gave you and I a promise. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. We shall be saved and all of our household. I call all of our household to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. It's harvest time. It's harvest time. It's harvest time. And we got family members that are away from God that aren't in church. Why don't you invite them? The worst thing they could say is no. The best thing they could say is sure, I'll come. I believe God will honor us because his name is the Lord of the harvest. But he says the laborers are so few. There's so few. Pray to the Lord of the harvest. I'm praying God is going to thrust us out into that harvest field. The world is going to be celebrating Halloween this week. Halloween is a high holy day for Satan. I love what Reverend Ron shared this morning. He said he grew up not knowing the truth. But we have the truth. We can save people from the occult. We can save people from satanic rituals. We can save people from playing Ouija boards and going to fortune tellers and doing all that crazy stuff out there in the world. Thank God for the truth. Come on, somebody. We will know the truth. And the truth shall make us free. In the book of Haggai, chapter 2 and verse 6, Haggai says, For thus says the Lord of hosts, Once more it is a little while, and I will shake heaven and earth, and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations. I'm telling you, there's a shaking going on. There's a shaking going on right now in our nation. And they shall come to the desire of all nations. And I will fill this temple with glory. Somebody shout glory. glory. Woo. Some people have never been exposed to the presence of the Lord. And when they come and they sense the love of God, they sense the presence, the glory, the weightiness of his presence. I'm telling you, they're going to sense a difference. They're going to sense something is different. I will fill this temple with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. And the glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, says the Lord of hosts. And my third point is I'm calling in an abundant harvest. I believe we need to call in a spiritual harvest. We need to call in a financial harvest. And we need to call in a physical harvest. But the Bible says that in the last days, in the last days, the glory of the latter house is going to be greater. I believe in the last days we are going to literally see a transfer of wealth. There are five transfers of wealth in the Bible. The first one was when the children of Israel were in bondage in Egypt under Pharaoh. And remember, the day before they left, God said, I want you to go into your homes and remain in isolation. During this pandemic, we've been in our homes in isolation. But then he says, I want you to apply the blood. I mean, if you thank God for the blood over the doorposts of the house. And when the death angel 
came, he had to pass over the houses and the families that had the blood. And then God said to the children of Israel, before you leave Egypt, before I bring you out, I want you to go to your neighbors, your Egyptian neighbors. I want you to ask them for gold, for silver, for their jewelry, for their clothing, for all their valuables. And in one day, in one day, God transferred the wealth of Egypt into the children of Israel who were in slavery and bondage for hundreds of years. And they left Egypt with a high hand of God's favor. Hallelujah. Now listen, if God could do that in one day, it doesn't take God long to do something great. I believe we're going to see a transfer of wealth in the days that we are living in. <laughs> Proverbs 13, 22, you know it well. A good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. But the wealth of the sinner, it's being laid up for the righteous. I pray for every business person in this house. I pray for your businesses to prosper. I pray for God to break you out of the glass ceiling and take your business to another level. Come on, somebody. I pray. And, and, and loosen a spirit of abundance, a spirit of prosperity. Listen, someone said, you believe we're living in the last days? I know this. In Matthew 24, 14, after Jesus lists all the things, there'll be wars, there'll be rumors of wars, people, they'll think this is the Christ, blah, 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 they go through all the lists. And then in verse 14, here's the words of Jesus. These aren't my words, these are his words. He says, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end shall come. I don't believe we've seen that happen yet. I believe there's going to be an end time revival. I believe there's going to be a, a third awakening. I believe there's going to be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit that this world has never seen or known before. Come on, somebody. But I know this. I know it takes money to get the gospel out. And so God's got to put the money out of the, out of the, the, the wealth of the wicked He's going to transfer it over into the hands of the righteous. And I believe that we are going to see a spirit of generosity, a spirit of abundance, a spirit of giving in the last days like we've never seen before because you and I are blessed to be a blessing. And so it's harvest time. I call in the harvest of souls. I call in... A spiritual harvest. The, the glory of the latter house will be greater. And I call in a financial harvest. I pray money comes to you from both expected and from unexpected sources in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, you take some of the wealth of the wicked and transfer it to the believer, to the righteous, so we can get the gospel out in all the world so you can come back and take us out of this crazy, wicked world in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody. Let's all stand together, please. Bow your heads with me. Close your eyes. If your head is bowed, your eyes are closed. If you do not have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus, or maybe you're away from God, you've drifted, you've fallen away, it's easy to do. 
But today I want to invite you to just invite Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins and to come into your heart. One thing I love about God, he goes where he's invited. Just say, Jesus, wash me and cleanse me. Fill me with peace, with the Holy Spirit. Be the Savior and the Lord of my life. Today, Lord, I'm coming home to you. If you prayed that prayer for the very first time, I want you to sense a peace coming over you. If you're coming home and coming back, returning to your first love, I want you to sense the smile of God upon your life. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to invite our altar workers to come down here in the front. Let's pray and say grace. We're going to go right next door for some refreshments. If you want to do your giving by credit or debit card, you can do that in the lobby. If you want to sign up for the sound ministry to be trained, you can do that at the front desk. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face, his countenance to smile and to shine upon you. May the Lord grant you his peace, his shalom, nothing missing, nothing broken. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, bless our food and our fellowship. Keep us all healthy and safe. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I love you. Hope to see you.